body diagrams are a tool used to diagram the relative magnitude and direction of forces acting on an object. The size of the arrows represent the magnitude of the force, and the arrow's direction signifies the direction of the force. It is common to represent the object on which the forces are acting as a dot. This helps to simplify the diagram. There is no rule for how many forces should be shown acting on an object, only that all forces acting on an object should be included. Depending on the scenario, there may be different numbers of forces acting on an object. It is also common practice to label the type of force that is acting on the object in the free body diagram. So in order to do this, it is important to know common types of forces. Forces can be divided into two main types, contact forces and non-contact forces. The normal force is a contact force that acts perpendicular to the surface that an object contacts. It is the force that solid objects exert on each other to prevent them from passing through each other. For example, a book resting on a table is held in place by the normal force. An applied force is any force that is applied to an object by a person or another object. For example, if a person were pushing a desk across the floor, the person would be pushing with an applied force. Friction is a force that is applied by a surface when an object moves across it or makes an effort to move across it. Friction will always be in the opposite direction of the motion. There are two types of friction, static friction and kinetic friction. Static friction acts when the objects are stationary and kinetic friction acts when objects are moving. Static friction is always greater than kinetic friction between two surfaces. Air resistance is a special type of friction that acts when an object is moving through air. Tension is a force that is transmitted by ropes, cables, or string. The direction of tension is always acting along the direction of the rope, and it acts equally on objects at opposite ends of the rope. The spring force is exerted by a compressed or stretched spring. The most common non-contact force is gravity. Gravity is the attractive force between any two objects with mass. And on the Earth, this is always directed toward the center of the Earth. Electrical and magnetic forces are also non-contact forces. Let's look at a couple examples to build some free body diagrams. Let's start with a book resting on a table. We know that this will have balanced forces because the object is not accelerating. First, we will represent the book as a dot and it will have a gravitational force acting on the book by the Earth, and this force will be downward toward the center of the Earth. We will also have a normal force that points upward on the book by the table. This is perpendicular to the surface of the table. You'll notice that we're using a specific notation to label the forces acting on the object. The large letter represents the type of force, in this case, gravity. The first subscript represents which object the force is acting on, and the second subscript represents which object the force is caused by. So in the case of gravity, it is on the book caused by the Earth. In a successful free body diagram, the first subscripts should always be the same, and they should describe the object on which the forces are acting. In this case, this is the book. Let's look at another example where a book is being pushed across the table at a constant velocity. Again, in this example, the object is not accelerating, so we will have balanced forces. In this free body diagram, we have gravity acting on the book by the Earth. This is a downward force toward the center of the Earth. We also have the normal force acting on the book by the table. This is perpendicular to the surface of the table, and is equal in magnitude or size to the gravitational force. We have an applied force on the book by the hand, and this is balanced by the friction force on the book by the table. Again, these forces are also balanced, so the book is not accelerating. In our final example, we have a rocket that is accelerating upward. Because it is accelerating, we will have unbalanced forces in our free body diagram or there will be a net force in the upward direction. We will have a gravitational force acting on the rocket by the Earth. This will be downward toward the center of the Earth. 
We will also have an applied force on the rocket by the booster. This force is acting upward. And finally, we have air resistance acting on the rocket by the air. This is in the downward direction. Because of the accelerated motion of the rocket, our free body diagram must show a net force in the upward direction. This is because acceleration and net force are always in the same direction.